Hello everybody, Mike, aka the Magico 13 here with episode 7 of our Out of This World series. As you can see, our plants have grown. It took about two days, and that will net us 150 science, which is quite a bit. Figuring we haven't gotten any serious science for a little while, um, other than trying to mess around with planes. Which, uh, if you saw last episode, did not go very well. So, we've got the science here in this plant pod thing. We're going to take that and put it in the actual command pod, just in case anything happens to that upon landing. Um, and then we're going to detach. We're going to take Geoflan Kerman down to the surface with the uh, plants because there's no use having three people stay up here. That's just using more life support and they can't do any more science without the plants. I'm going to disable the life support in these containers and only allow it in one of the containers. And the reason for that is I can't transfer life support. Like, you'll see there's a life support thing, um, can, I suppose, in the middle of that stack. And I can't transfer that life support, so I want to make sure that I only really use it from one spot, because we are possibly going to try to uh, transfer some life support later using Kerbal Attachment System. So now this is all at two times the normal speed. We're just dropping our periapsis down into the atmosphere. Um, you can see it there. We're just barely colliding with the surface. Time warp up, point retrograde, and just let it fall. So... We've got a little bit of time here. Um, you can see Kerbin through the uh, camera there. A um, couple updates. Kerbal construction time is going pretty well. I am currently working on a build list for it, which is coming along. It's just proving to be a little more troublesome than I would have liked, so I've got a couple bugs I have to fix, and then I'll hopefully get a release out this weekend, maybe even by the not by the time this episode airs, but maybe the same day that this episode's episode airs, so tomorrow. Um, oh yeah, so we drop that. We have a heat shield here on the science pod. That way it doesn't get destroyed. Honestly, with the results being in the capsule, it would be fine if it was destroyed. Um, but, oh well, we ditch it now. And we ditch the... No, actually, no, we keep it. We ditch the uh, heat shield. Our parachutes deploy. You hear the heat shield then crash, because the heat shield stayed with us the whole time. And we're now 300 meters above the surface of the water, and just kind of gliding back down. Nothing really too exciting time warp up just to make this happen sooner, go out of the cockpit, because it really doesn't matter if we uh, see these last couple seconds in IVA, we can't control anything. And then it just like flips out and destroys the docking port, which is fine because we don't need it again. It's just kind of funny. Um, you actually have probably seen in the bottom corner there was a KCT button. Oh yeah, so 153.8 science and Let's get, that has KAS stuff, that has pipes, RCS, hmm, RCS would definitely help with docking. Um, but with these radial things, or there's always, we can get a couple more things of science, there's the processing lab, huh, this is a tough one. I know if we get this one, we can get docking ports later. We actually have enough science so we can get two, so I think RCS would be handy for docking. So let's get this. And then, let's see, what else does that unlock? Uh, this is the node that has docking ports, right here. Yeah, docking ports. We want those. 
So that will be one of the next things we get. Until then, I have also added ScanSat. Oh yes, so Kerbal Construction Time is here. Um, this is the implementation before I took over. Um, so you sit on the pad, your resources are all empty. When that finishes, your resources fill up. Um, and that window is toggleable, toggleable with the button in the bottom left. Um, we've also added ScanSat, and you will see there's a little satellite icon just below the warp counter and where the, um, the, the delay from remote tech is. Um, so yeah, I'm going to speed through this launch right about now. It's twice as fast. It didn't just randomly have a huge amount of acceleration. Uh, that is post-processing. But yeah, so I'm going to send this to Bop. Um, we could map Kerbin. That's pretty easy to do. In fact, we will do it in a later episode. But I want to go back to Bop. I feel like there's a lot of science there that we missed. And... Um, unfortunately it doesn't have biomes. If it had biomes like the moon or Minmus, we could go there a lot of times and never exhaust the amount of science you get. I think just from the moon you can get something like 10,000 science. Maybe that's an over-exaggeration. It might be close to like 6,000. Either way, you can get pretty far in the tree, never leaving the Kerbin system, because if you include going to Minmus, I think you can complete the tree completely, hence the completing the tree. But I'm pretty pretty sure you can complete the entire tree without actually having to leave Kerbin's Sphere of Influence. Um, we don't have that luxury because the only moon we have is Bop, and Bop doesn't have those biomes, so we can't basically reset all of the experiments. We can do high above BOP, low above, in space near BOP, technically, or low above. Um, drop these fairings. Maybe you can see this kind of... I really need to stop doing night launches. I have a feeling I don't, since I have recorded all of this already. Most of the time, I launch immediately when I can. The reason... There are a couple of reasons. The one reason is that that means less wasted time with Kerbal construction time, because in the current implementation, without the build list, in order for me to um, start building a new ship, I have to put it on the pad immediately, and time I take between launch and um, putting a new one on the pad is time that's basically lost. Also, this one, in this version, you can't exit the game or else your ship will never finish. Uh, that is fixed in the version that I have made. Um, and once the build list is out, you can leave it on the pad for however long you want, and new ones will still be, be progressed. Um, so we are just doing our circularization now with our last stage. This stage will also take us to Minmus, not Minmus, will take us all the way back to Bop. Um, yeah, I was just doing that with pointing it at the node but burning manually because if I tried using the execute button, it would not work very nicely. Um, it does the entire burn after the maneuver node is encountered, which is not what we want. Um, so yeah, so we have an encounter lined up, we point there, uh, it's, what is it, a 662 meter per second burn, eh, we can let the maneuver node thing do it. Um, I don't want to do it, it's only like a 15 second burn, we'll probably mess it up a little bit, but it'll be fine enough that we can always change it, but yeah, okay, there we go, yeah, we have a periapsis of 38 kilometers, I think, um, could get that closer, might get that closer as we get closer, um, closer, closer, closer. Set an hour, of, yeah, I tried to set an hour ahead of time, but that doesn't make any sense. Um, it only takes us about an hour to get there. So, we let that go, and we went back and actually put another thing on the pad, but I apparently didn't keep that video. Um, that way something can build while we're doing this, and since Bop has such a small amount of gravity, um, we once again, the instant you get captured, it just, yeah, 
your whole your whole maneuver just gets messed up the instant you get it low enough to be captured because just the smallest amount of um, the smallest amount of delta V will result in a huge difference. So yes, here is our actual ship, the bopper, the bopper, the um, time. Wow, no, I'm looking at all the wrong things. Sorry, the mapper is actually on the top. It's currently folded up. Um, you will see it in a little bit. So we need to get this thing into a polar orbit in order to um, map the entire thing. There's also a cathane scanner on here, so we're going to... Uh, that's actually the primary reason I set this to BOP, is BOP has such a low gravity that it's really good for um, setting up a cathane refinery that we can dock ships at and refuel them and then... Um, after we refuel them, they can leave, and it won't cost, like, any delta V. I think Bop's escape velocity is something like 30 meters per second, which is about 75 or 80 miles per hour, if I can do the math correctly. Um, yeah, I actually want to drop our orbit, because this is going to take forever. Um... Yeah, so you can time, you can escape BOP, you will escape BOP before you're able to go back in time or forward in time in a DeLorean, which is a Back to the Future reference, and if you don't get that, I'm really sad, but um, yes, 88 miles per hour is how fast you have to go in a DeLorean in order to time travel. Um, I suppose it actually also is for a train. Basically, you have to go 88 miles per hour. Um, and that is actually higher than Bob's escape velocity. So, yes, here we are mapping now. We released the mapper earlier. Um, it was that satellite-ish. If you had one of those old TV... Oh, yes, this. That white speck. Do you see that? I think that's the Kraken. And we're going to go visit that in a later episode. Um... For now, we're going to send up another plant lab because I'm curious as to how much science it will net us. Um, so, yes, you can hear those solid boosters. I think, was I smart enough to actually reduce their... Uh, no, I was not smart enough to reduce their thrust. They are going at a stupidly high thrust away. We're spinning in all sorts of directions and revert... Let's try that again. I'm not sure if the sound is off for you guys, too. If it is, I may need to go back and fix this. For me, the sound is pretty off, but it might just be that the video is lagging behind. Um, so I will have to watch that after I actually uh, finish editing this. So yeah, we're just going to point more up this time. Um, in hopes of not flipping out stage based on sound. Okay, I can't apparently base this on the sound. Or I don't know if I should base it on the sound or the video, honestly. Uh, ramble, ramble, ramble. Okay, so yeah, we're going to dock this thing. I'm going to skip most of that because the actual waiting for the intercept is really long and tedious and boring. Um, other news? my cat Kepler. I have two cats, Kepler and Morgana. They're brother and sister, um, both less than one year old. Um, Kepler unfortunately has a disease, we're pretty sure now, called FIP. Uh, feline infectious parent, parent, no, titus, something like that. Um, which is unfortunately a uh, incurable and terminal disease. Um, well, now I'm just making you guys sad, so maybe I won't talk about this. But yeah, it's it's been a kind of rough week, because we've been trying to... Uh, we've been going to the vet a lot, trying to figure out what's going on. They've taken a lot of samples, and they're pretty sure that's what it is now. Um, happier things! Twitch plays Pokemon, probably still going on, figuring at the time of recording this audio, I think that they are still trying to beat the Pokemon Tower in 
I think it's Lavender Town. Um, Twitch Plays Pokemon is a really entertaining thing, and you should probably check it out at least for a little while. Um, yeah, we're going to get an intercept here really quick, maybe. Um, Twitch Plays Pokemon is... Tens of thousands of people trying to control a single Pokemon game. Um, in the Twitch chat, you're capable of sending the commands. Like, you can say left or up or right or A or B or start. Um, in order to control what the character is doing on the screen. However, there are 60... The minimum I've seen now is 60,000. The maximum I've seen is 120,000, which was during the... Um, battle with Giovanni. Uh, so yes, we perform that maneuver node, we get an intercept of not that great until we actually get past here, in which case we get a pretty decent intercept. Um, yeah, 3.9 kilometers on orbit one. Um, and I apparently am just going to keep all of this because we're going to go two minutes ahead of that, warp up Kerbal Alarm Clock will slow us down, we delete it, and then I'm just going to skip all of the, yeah, getting close because it's absolutely awful. You can see we jumped at something like, I think, 20 minutes. Um, so we're just getting really close now. I'm trying to use the docking alignment thing and RCS, and we're almost completely out of RCS fuel. So... I didn't actually bring any mono... Yeah, we're completely out of RCS now. I didn't actually bring any mono propellant. I just used the 10 that's available in the command pod. Next time, I'll probably bring mono propellant. But we're close enough now that I can maybe use the engines just a little bit. Get it kind of close and hope that the magnetism takes over. So if I turn off the SAS... Yeah, there we go. Uh, we eventually got a docking. It took me like something like 20 minutes and it wasn't very interesting, so I just cut it. Um, so yeah, Twitch Plays Pokemon, 60, 100,000 people trying to control a single character. It's, it's awful. It's really entertaining though. Um, a couple of things that happened. They taught their, or they've released their, they've released at five, at least five Pokemon. The first one was their starter, which they re -rele they released a Charmeleon, um, and a Rattata, and a Zubat, and a Hitmonlee, and a Flareon, and there's a whole lot of weird, like, religions forming around the Helix fossil, and it's just a really entertaining and somewhat confusing time. Also, I can't, for the life of me, control this, uh, winch properly, which is apparently an issue with horizontal stack winches. The vertical ones supposedly work fine, so we're just going to eject it, and it just shoots off into space. So we're going to go fly over and get that. Um, I, what I want to do is I want to try to dock these two things together, these two ships together, using KAS, and then we'll be able to transfer fuel Unfortunately, we won't be able to do it while still docked with the docking port, because the docking port itself prevents that, and now we get, like, thrown around. And if we could, you know, use the GUI to bring this in, it would be extremely helpful, but no, of course we can't, because KAS is currently broken. Um, so yes, we grab this and right-click on this to plug it in, and there we go. My sound, I think, is still off. And I'm not sure why. Um, I may have to shift this audio recording a little bit. But uh, So, yeah, we are going to attempt, I think, to transfer. But you see they just gray out, which is not useful. So we undock. The station now doesn't have access to anything because I turned all these off. But um, I'm not really sure why I unplugged that. I need to go get it back. Um, but yeah, I was talking about Twitch Plays Pokemon. Check it out. It's just twitch.com slash twitchplayspokemon. Uh, the Reddit is also kind of handy. It's reddit.com slash r slash twitchplayspokemon. 
Um, if not, try a Google search. I'm sure it'll be going on for days. They only have four badges right now. They've had four badges for three days. Um, so it's going to take them a while. But it's it's at worth it's at least worth a quick visit. Um, there's a bit of a description that explains it a little better on the actual page. Um, there's a pretty good chance when you submit your commands they won't get executed because there are thousands of people trying to do it at once. So don't expect that. Um, yeah, now we're just going to redock and that pretty much is the end of the episode. We don't have RCS, so I can't, like, back the ship out at all. So we're just going to kind of do this. I'm going to cheat a little bit and not use IVA for this. It's, like, we're going, like, two meters. And now, hopefully, we're far enough away. We can stop moving back. I'm just... That plug is just swinging around. All right, there we go. Yeah, this should be fine. We're above it now. We can actually line the docking ports up. Um, it's like some sort of weird orbital ballet. <laughs> and we're docked. And that's it. I'll see you guys next time.